What is going on everybody, it's Skills here, and man, oh man, today we are going to be talking about probably one of my favorite named ARs to play with. Now, this one is the FAMAS AR, yes, this bad boy is a little beast. Not only does this weapon look good, it performs really well. So we'll get into the build that I'm currently using in just a second. I did want to show you guys some gameplay with me using the build with the current AR build. So if you put this weapon on an AR build and you spec around it right, it does really well and I actually have a lot of fun playing this and I think a lot of you guys will actually enjoy playing with this weapon too. Of course, the FAMAS is already a really deadly weapon, but it could be hard to control at times. But the talent that you get on this weapon is what actually makes it really good and really fun to use no matter what distance. As you guys are seeing right here, right? You're seeing I'm not fighting close range. Some of these shots right now that you're gonna see are at distance. And when the talent kicks in, it's so easy to control. And you should be able to hit anything. And I actually like running this scope right here. You can run this on any eight times or higher scope because of the build that I am running. But if you look at this, this thing is barely moving, right? And you have to remember my sensitivity is pretty high and I'm playing on a controller. so. If I can do it, you guys could definitely do it. But what I wanna do is I wanna break down the build for you guys, just so you know, right off the bat, we are running the gunner specialization. You can run whatever specialization you want, but I feel with this build, the gunner specialization stands out the most. So the weapon, the weapon is called the Burnout. It's an assault rifle. It's a FAMAS, a name FAMAS. Now it comes with 99,000 damage based on my build, 900 RPM, a 50 round mag. Now I have assault rifle damage on there, health damage, and then for the attributes, I went with damage to targets out of cover. Now it comes with a talent called perfectly on empty. Reloading from empty grants 40% weapon handling for 10 seconds. Now if you remember, in title update 10, they improved weapon handling to make it more powerful and to make it feel like it was actually worth having. And you can really see it take effect on a weapon like the FAMAS. Usually I would need to run some type of stability on the FAMAS to be able to control it. But once I go reload from empty, this thing works really well. Now I do have it modded with the eight time scope because of the ch chest piece talent. And then on the muzzle and the underburrow, I'm running crit chance mods. And then of course I am running a 20 round mag. But you can run whatever setup you want. But if you're gonna run this particular setup, you need to run an eight times scope or but higher. When I tell you, when you reload from empty, this thing barely moves at all. That 40% weapon handling is amazing. Remember, weapon handling is accuracy, it's recoil, it's um, stability, it's all that in one. And that's why this weapon, the burnout, performs so well after you reload because you get that 40% weapon handling. And if you have any type of weapon handling on your build, it's just gonna stack on top of that. Now for my backup, my secondary, I like to run the Baker's Dozen. This is the named um, rifle that comes with perfect lucky shot. It has rifle damage, it has critical hit damage, and it has damage to targets out of cover. We also run the specialization pistol, the gunner pistol, and you can run whatever pistol you want. The main thing you guys wanna focus on is having a rifle and having an AR. Now for the mask, we are running the Fenris mask. This is gonna give us 10% assault rifle damage. It gives us 12,000 weapon damage. So we have weapon damage rolled on here. Then we have critical hit damage, critical hit chance, and then critical hit damage for a mod. This is kind of what you wanna go for. You can stack more headshot damage if you want, but that's up to you. Now we are running a three priest providence. So we get the 15% headshot damage, 10% critical hit chance, and 15% critical hit damage. Now we do have weapon damage rolled on here. We have critical hit chance, critical hit damage, and then we have a 6% critical hit chance mod on here. Now we have focus. Now what focus is so good at is it provides you with 50 to 60% extra damage depending if you have perfect or you have regular. And I'll show you in a second perfect so you guys can see the two. So the way this works is it increases the total weapon damage by 5% if you have regular or 6% for every second you are scoped in. Now you do have to use eight times or higher scope, so it's either 50% or 60%, and that's why I'm using the eight times scope, but you can see how easy I'm able to control this. If we hop right into the holster, we have our second piece of Providence, which gives us weapon damage, critical hit damage, and critical hit chance rolled on here. Like I said, if you wanna stack some headshot damage, you can. Now for our third piece of Providence, you wanna go with the backpack because 
that's going to allow you to get the three piece um for the 15 percent critical hit damage we got weapon damage on here we have critical hit chance we decided to go with a little bit of headshot damage because it was already on there and then we've got a critical hit damage mod now i have vigilance for the back patent talent and what that does is increase total weapon damage by 25 percent taking damage to sables is buff but that's why i'm going to be running this with a shield because if i run this with the shield i won't take any damage for that short period of time that my shield is up so vigilance will 100 percent always be active so that's why i went with vigilance on the backpack versus going with something like unstoppable force now, if we get into the gloves, we are running the Grupo Sombra gloves, and this gives us 15% critical hit damage. So we're stacking that crit chance, crit damage. We do have critical hit damage on here, and then we have weapon handling. I would like to get rid of this weapon handling, either have headshot damage or critical hit chance, one or the other. Now, for the knee pads, we're going with the named Overlord knee pads, the Fox Per knee pads. And the reason why is we get the multiplicative of 8% damage to targets out of cover on there. And then we have critical hit damage and we have weapon damage. And we also get 10% rifle damage. So that's why with the Baker Dozen, if we decide to swap to our rifle, we can still hit really hard with this build because we also get the extra 10% rifle damage. Now for the skills, I do run the shield. You wanna go with the Crusader shield. This will allow you to use an AR so I can use my assault rifle. And then um, I always, if I'm running solo, I run the Reviver Hive. If you are running in a team, you can run any other skill you want. Maybe the Pulse, maybe a Striker Drone. I'll let you guys decide on that one. But this right here is really the build. And let's get into the crit chance, crit damage. So for crit chance, we have almost 50% right here. Now this can be approved with some of the rolls. Also, if I upgrade my watch a little bit, we also have 137% crit hit damage, which you could definitely improve. And then we have 109% headshot damage. And you guys saw some of the numbers I was pulling out, right? And I've seen some of the numbers go up as high as 700,000, 725,000. You'll see in a few of these, if I get the full buffs going with having vigilance, having focus fully active, and even right there, 800,000, I think it was 819,000 crits. So you can definitely pull out some really high numbers depending if you're getting those headshots and you're critting when you're getting those headshots. But you don't even need to crit to melt these enemies. As you guys are see, this is heroic. So if you want to run a different assault rifle, I would say try to pick the assault rifles with a little bit um, higher RPM, something like the Police M4. You could even go all the way down to the custom P416. But ideally, the FAMAS, I feel because it has a high rate of fire, has some really good damage. It's great all-around weapon. And with the talent, it's definitely easy to control without having to mod it itself. But this is a build that I find myself having a lot of fun with, being able to melt enemies with, and being able to use something besides rifle builds for DPS builds. So if you're looking at something different, if you wanna try another build, you're tired of running um, rifle builds, you wanna try a new weapon, definitely give the burnout a shot. And don't forget to pair it up with a good build. You can't just try it on a horrible build. Try it on a build that I put out right now. And I'm sure you guys will actually enjoy it and have fun with it. Now, don't forget, if you're going to run a straight rifle build and you don't want to use the AR, you can switch out this Fenris mask and you can put a Coyote's mask. You can even put a Cheska mask. It's really up to you, but 100%. Um, it's a pretty easy, quick fix, quick swap out if you want to swap this build from AR primary to maybe AR secondary or not even use an AR and just rifle primary. Let me know what you guys think about the named FAMAS, the burnout. Do you guys enjoy it? Do you guys like running the FAMAS period? What do you think about that talent that gives you 40% weapon handling? Do you think it's worth it? Do you think it's better to just run a different weapon or do you think it's better just to run a different talent and have a harder time to control it? I think once you get past that first clip, it, come, it becomes really easy to actually control this one. And that's what I really like about it. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget, if you guys enjoy videos like this, leave a thumbs up. I finally got a team together and it looks like we are gonna be going for, um, we're gonna try for Worlds first, but most likely we'll be able to be closer at getting um, console world first. So I know when I did it with my last group, we were either like third on PS4 or second on PS4. And I think that was second, I think that was um, second or third console-wise, so on Xbox or PlayStation. So yeah, that's our goal. We definitely want to try 
to maybe get world's first on um, playstation 4 at least and hopefully we can be console first too right so that would actually be pretty cool um maybe we'll keep it close and we can get close to these pc guys but you know a lot of times those guys are on it all right we're gonna wrap this up here guys don't forget leave a thumbs up hit the subscribe button if you're new i'll see you in the next one nothing but skills out